carbohydrate digestion in ruminants so in case of ruminant animals uh, saliva production is there but there is no salivary amylase in the mouth so the material uh, passes to the rumen so in the rumen there is a, a vast population of different type of microorganisms that are responsible for microbial fermentation they cause uh, feed fermentation so ruminant animals uh, they have very extensive pre gastric fermentation as compared to horse or rabbit which are known as post gastric fermenter ruminants are pre gastric fermenters so there is a lot of uh, fermentation in the rumen and almost all carbohydrates they are fermented in the rumen however uh, chances are there some of the stuff might not undergo ruminal fermentation or it might escape ruminal fermentation so such type of material is known as bypass material or bypass nutrients so all the nutrients which escape ruminal fermentation they are known as bypass nutrient so similarly some of the starch might uh, escape the ruminal fermentation and here a question arises whether bypass nutrients they are digestible in the small intestine so the answer is yes depending upon the nature of that stuff if uh, the treatment which we apply for making it a bypass nutrient uh, is a uh, ph uh, sensitive then definitely it will undergo uh, digestion process in the small intestine but some of the time we have some overheated protein that even escape their digestion in the small intestine so such type of uh, treatments or such type of bypass nutrients they are not uh, considered as good one uh, ruminal fermentation is highly efficient uh, considering the feed stuff ingested why we are saying it is highly efficient uh, if we look at in context uh, context of efficient here we mean that we feed those stuff which are of poor quality they are converted into good quality in the rumen like if we are feeding roughages so in terms of their uh, nutrient value in terms of their uh, price value they are not uh, of good quality so when they are fermented in the rumen they produce energy that energy is utilized by microorganisms and they produce bfas and ultimately those bfas they are then converted into glucose and utilized for ruminant animal productivity so we get product in terms of uh, milk or meat from ruminant animal through utilization of these poor quality refuges so that's why it is considered as highly efficient because uh, we spend less and get more uh, that's why it is known as highly efficient so before uh, going into ruminal fermentation process uh, little about rumen ecosystem uh, rumen uh, have a very favorable environment for the survival as well as the activity of anaerobic microorganisms uh, the ph of ruminal fluid is between 5.5 to 6.5 but generally it is towards the neutral side uh, when we are feeding a very balanced diet to the animal however when we uh, shift animal from roughage towards the concentrate and uh, then the ph moves towards uh, the acidic side the environment within the rumen is usually warm and moist the temperature is between 38 to 42 degrees centigrade and uh, dry matter content in the rumen they are 12 to 15% so rumen have a good population of bacteria which are the microflora of the rumen and they have the protozoal population that the fauna of the rumen is established uh, Uh, up to 6 weeks of the animal life so there are 25 to 50 million bacteria per ml of the ruminal contents and they ferment different type of substrates uh, if we talk about carbohydrates so cellulose starch and soluble carbohydrates all get fermented in the rumen so there are 11 different groups of uh, bacteria uh, in the rumen 
uh, from carbohydrate fermentation point of view, the cellulolytic bacteria, hemicellulolytic bacteria, amylolytic bacteria, and sugar utilizing bacteria, they are the main uh, four uh, groups that are responsible for the uh, digestion or fermentation of carbohydrates. Cellulolytic bacteria, they digest cellulose, hemicellulolytic, they digest hemicellulose, amylolytic are the starch digester, whereas sugar utilizer mainly utilize monosaccharides and disaccharides. The other groups are proteolytic, acid utilizing, ammonia producer, vitamin synthesizer, and methane producers. So if we look at uh, the bacteria, so they are the cellulolytic bacteria or fiber digester. They predominate uh, in the human environment when we fed our animal with a roughage diet. So if we are feeding green or dry roughages to the animal, then the population of these cellulolytic bacteria will be high. Uh, these bacteria produce cellulase enzyme, which are responsible for the breakdown of beta-1,4 glycosidic bond, or you can say the bond uh, in case of cellulose molecules. These bacteria are mostly active uh, when the ruminal pH is towards the neutral side, so they are active between 6 to 7 pH. They require nitrogen in the form of ammonia for their own body synthesis. They, are, they also require sulfur for the synthesis of sulfur-containing amino acid like methionine and cysteine. Uh, in case of uh, cellulolytic bacteria, the major end product uh, is acetate, or we say that major VFAs produces acetate. Here are uh, the common uh, species which are responsible for fiber digestion. So major cellulolytic species are bacteroid succinogen, ruminococcus polyphacians, ruminococcus albus, butyrovibrio, fibrosolvents. Butyrovibrio fibrosolvents is also uh, produce hemicellulase enzyme, and it also produce uh, the pectinase that cause hydrolysis of uh, pectin-like substances. Uh, then comes uh, the starch digester or sugar digester. They are commonly known as amylolytic bacteria or sugar digesting bacteria. They are more common or their population is on the higher side when we feed grain to the animal. So they ferment starch and they convert starch into disaccharide and then sugar digester convert that disaccharide into monosaccharides. Their preferred pH is less than that of cellulolytic bacteria. So their activity is optimal when the pH is between five to six. However, uh, sometimes due to uh, feeding of high amount of concentrate or starch, uh, to the animal, the pH uh, goes uh, down uh, towards more acidic and that causes lactic acidosis. These bacteria also require nitrogen in the form of ammonia or peptide for their own body synthesis and uh, they produce uh, propanate, butyrate and lactate, but the dominant VFAs uh, through the activity of these amylolytic bacteria is propanic acid or uh, propanate. So chances of lactic acidosis uh, are there if we are feeding our animal high starchy diet. So due to uh, high starchy diet, uh, there is a production of more acid that cause a drop in the ruminal pH and uh, the activity of a lactic acid producing bacteria uh, become uh, more. So that result in the production of more lactic acid and ultimately uh, the animal may suffer from this lactic acidosis if we feed high amount of starch to our animals. The major amylolytic species are bacteroids, uh, amylophilus, streptococcus bovis, succinomonas, amylolytica, bacteroids, luminicola. They are the sugar utilizing bacteria. They are mainly the lactobacilli species. So when starch is there, ultimately there is a production of disaccharides and monosaccharides. So that cause uh, or that Lower down the ruminal pH and the activity of lactose bacilli become more. At a low pH, first the streptococci they become active, that result uh, in the production of lactic acid uh, later on due to lactobacilli species uh, due to drop in the pH. 
Here is a summary of different type of bacterial species, their substrate and their major fermentation product and the niche where they are active. Um, here you can see all of uh, these uh, uh, bacteria, particularly uh, which are responsible uh, for this cellulose starch uh, digestion. Uh, they produce acetate, propanate, and to uh, some extent, uh, butyric acid. But there is also production of carbon dioxide gas as a result of microbial fermentation of carbohydrates. Now, this is about uh, microbial metabolism. Okay, what is going on uh, when the fermentation process uh, is there? The carbohydrates or the sugars, they undergo uh, catabolism. So they catabolized, and as a result, there is a production of VFAs, gases, and heat in the rumen. The energy produced as a result of uh, this carbohydrate metabolism, as a result of uh, this sugar utilization by microorganisms or microbial fermentation, there is a production of ATP. And there is also a production of NADPH. So both are energy uh, generating uh, processes. So this energy is utilized by the microorganisms for their own body synthesis. It means the energy produced as a result of carbohydrate metabolism as a first step is utilized by the microorganisms for their own body synthesis, for their body maintenance, for their growth, and definitely for their propagation or replication. So there are two stages of bacterial digestion and fermentation. Uh, in the first step, uh, the digestion of complex carbohydrate to simple carbohydrate by extracellular microbial enzymes. So this is the first step where the microbial enzymes, the extracellular microbial enzymes, they cause fermentation of the carbohydrates and the complex carbohydrates are converted into sugar. So this process is similar to that of digestion of carbohydrate in non-ruminant where they are digestive enzymes that cause hydrolysis. However, the difference is here the enzyme production is by ruminal microorganisms rather than by the ruminant animal itself. So in the second stage, the utilization of these uh, product is almost involved the same pathway in, in many uh, respects, similar to those involved in the metabolism of carbohydrate by the animal itself. Like when there is a production of glucose, so that glucose is utilized by the microorganisms and then uh, that is uh, processed by the microorganism in the same way uh, like uh, glycolytic pathway or tricarboxylic acid cycle in monogastric species. So it's the summary uh, what we have discussed. If the carbohydrates, either they are the cellulose, hemicellulose, pectin, starch, and sugars, they are converted into glucose. Glucose is the end product of carbohydrate digest digestion in case of monogastric species. But here, this glucose is utilized by the microorganisms and then it is converted into volatile fatty acids, the major end product of carbohydrate fermentation in ruminant animals. Cellulose is uh, the product which is produced as a result of this cellulose fermentation. And uh, in case of sugar, uh, there is the production of maltose. So they are converted into glucose. So ruminant animals, they cannot produce the cellulase, rather it is produced by the microorganisms. Food is first chewed, then enter the rumen, bacteria and protozoa, they hydrolyze cellulose to produce cellulose and glucose. So within the rumen, how uh, this digestive process is going on, uh, these microorganisms, they get attached, they colonize uh, over the substrate, and then they, produce their enzymes. So this uh, process is known as uh, the fermentation of the substances. Uh, the major or the more uh, the most important thing is that there is a, some lag period when the food is in the rumen and the digestion or fermentation process starts. So there is a lag period during which there is no fermentation. So during this time, what happens, the microorganisms, they get attached to the substrate after attachment, they produce uh, their enzymes and those extracellular enzymes that cause fermentation. The second most important thing is a ruminal movement. 
and ruminal movement helps uh, to cause a proper intermingling or mixing of the microorganism with the substrate if there is no ruminal movement or there is no mixing then microbial species would not be able to get attached to almost uh, all of the feed stuff almost all of the material present in the rumen so as a result of this microbial attachment and the production of enzymes the cellulose hemicellulose and other carbohydrates carbohydrates uh, they get digested or fermented and they yield sugars so those sugars are fermented to produce volatile fatty acids uh, similarly the starch and simple sugars they are more rapidly fermented as compared to cellulose or cellulose into bfas the reason being uh, they are easily hydrolyzed at sacrolytic bacteria uh, the protozoa they engulf starch particle prior to digesting them so so how uh, starch get fermented in the rumen as i have mentioned earlier the digestion of complex carbohydrate to simple sugar by extracellular microbial enzymes is almost similar to that of the digestion of the carbohydrate in the non ruminants so when bacterial species uh, or the sacrolytic bacteria uh, they get attached with the starch particle so they produce amylases so starch is hydrolyzed by uh, amylases or by amylolytic and dextrinolytic bacteria to maltose and some glucose so once the starch is degraded to maltose it is fermented rapidly by these sacrolytic microorganisms so starch and dextrin uh, due to bacterial amylases they are converted into maltose and isomaltose then there is a production of maltase maltose phosphorylase or 1,6 glucosidase by the microorganism and that does the conversion of this maltose and isomaltose into glucose or glucose 1,6 phosphate so this is what is going on with the starch the role of luminal protozoal species in starch uh, degradation is unclear because it is difficult to differentiate between starch digested by the protozoa and that degraded by the engulf bacteria uh, because uh, back protozoa they engulf the bacteria so if they are hydrolyzing the starch so we cannot differentiate okay, how much quantity is digested by the protozoa and how much quantity is degraded by the bacteria then comes the fructans fructans uh, if you remember fructans they are the water soluble carbohydrates they are of two types number one is levan where is uh, where the linkage is 26 and inulin where the linkage is 21 so these are the beta d fructose molecules which are linked together by 26 or 21 linkage so they are hydrolyzed by the enzyme attacking these uh, bonding positions 21 and 26 linkages to give fructose so fructose uh, may also produce uh, as a result of degradation of the sucrose sucrose is made up of glucose and fructose now when it is hydrolyzed by sucrase enzyme there is a production of one glucose and one fructose molecule so fructans or sucrose that result in the production of the sucrose molecule so this is uh, how uh, these uh, starch and uh, fructans uh, they are converted uh, into pyruvate so starch is hydrolyzed into maltose by amylase or through into isomaltose and then they are either it's a maltose or isomaltose they are converted into glucose then this glucose enter into the glycolytic pathway or amden meru pathway where it is phosphorylated and it is converted into glucose 6 phosphate then this glucose 6 phosphate there is a fructose it is converted into fructose 6 and then fructose 1 6 base phosphate or diphosphate and finally it uh, it is converted into pyruvic acid so in case of fructans there is a production of fructose because it's a homoglycan that is made up of fructose that after hydrolysis is uh, is uh, is produce uh, produce uh, fructose the fructose is then converted into fructose 6 phosphate and it follow the same pathway 
um, of amdan bayer root pathway and ultimately converted into pyruvic acid in case of sucrose due to uh, sucrase enzyme it is converted into glucose and fructose the monomer units of suc sucrose so this fructose then enter into the it is uh, amdan bayer root pathway and similarly the glucose follow the pathway and finally they are converted into pyruvic acid Uh, so the fermentation of glucose and other monosaccharide occur mainly by the amdan bayer root pathway conversion of hexose so to two molecules or two moles of pyruvate yield two atps and two nadh nicotinamide adenine dinucleotide the atp generated primary energy source for the growth and maintenance of the bacteria so here are the chemical structure and uh, chemical formulas and uh, or the structures and uh, the reactions the glucose is converted into glucose 6 phosphate there is a production of uh, there is a utilization of one molecule of atp then as a second step when fructose 6 phosphate is converted into fructose 16 diphosphate or bisphosphate one atp is utilized in this reaction then it is converted into dihydroxy acetone phosphate or glyceraldehyde 3 phosphate so this is a three carbon compound it is then converted into 13 bis phosphate 13 bis phosphate glycerate and then there is a production of one molecule of nadh because uh, this is a three carbon molecule so it mean uh, as the uh, when this fructose is converted into this so there is a production of two uh, dihydroxy acetone phosphate or two glyceraldehyde three phosphate it then uh, this 13 bis uh, phosphate glycerate is converted into phosphoenol pyruvate again there is a production of one mole of atp and then from two phosphoglycerate into phosphoenol pyruvate uh, there is a production of water uh, molecule and finally this phosphoenol pyruvate is converted into pyruvic acid and there is a production of one atp this phospho uh, pyruvic acid is either converted into acetyl coa and then enter into a tca or citric acid cycle but under anaerobic condition uh, what happen this pyruvic acid is converted into lactic acid uh, this is a common example if we feel muscle fatigue uh, if we do excessive exercise so that is due to the accumulation of this lactic acid so under anaerobic condition uh, this pyruvic acid is converted into lactic acid so at this step uh, this nadh is utilized uh, you can say the energy is utilized and there is a production of nad molecule so these are the key enzymes uh, which are responsible uh, for these reactions starting from hexokinase then glucose 6 phosphate glucose phosphate isomerase so these are the enzymes so pyruvate after conversion into acetyl coa enter into citric acid cycle in the mitochondria citric acid cycle yield mainly energy in the form of hydrogen equivalent that is nadh and it provides free energy to the tissue and the oxidation of nadh2 and fadh2 in the respiratory chain lead to the generation of atp via oxidative phosphorylation so this is the tca cycle acetyl coa is converted into citrate and then citrate into isocitrate oxalosuccinic acid alpha ketoglutarate succinyl coa and then succinic acid fumaric acid malic acid and finally into oxaloacetate and that again uh, when it get attached with the acetyl coa it is converted into citrate here is a summary of uh, energy production and energy utilization so in the glycolytic pathway there is a, a production of 2 nadh and there is a production of 2 atps and again 2 atps so in total there is a production of 10 atps at three steps in the glycolytic pathway however there is a utilization of 2 atps one is glucose conversion into glucose 6 a uh, phosphate through hexokinase and then fructose 6 into fructose 16 bis phosphate by phosphofructokinase so two molecules or two uh, moles of atps uh, they are utilized 
uh, two ATPs, uh, they're utilized and 10 are produced. So in total, uh, or as a net amount, we get eight ATPs as a result of glucose conversion into pyruvic acid. Then pyruvic acid enter into citric acid cycle. So within the citric acid cycle, uh, there is a different steps where there is energy production and there is a net production of 30 ATPs. If we sum up uh, these two, uh, if we look at this, uh, these eight ATPs, they are produced as a result of glycolytic pathway and 30 ATPs are produced as a result of uh, citric acid cycle. So in total, there is a production of 38 ATPs. And two ATPs is the case when pyruvic acid is converted into lactic acid. So uh, under anaerobic condition, there is only generation of two ATPs when uh, one mole of glucose is oxidized under the anaerobic conditions. So this is uh, all about uh, for today.